A relationship is built on trust, right? And understanding. A relationship is most of the time built on you feeling like you know the person that you are giving yourself to, right? Well, that relationship is the same when it comes to your favorite rapper or R&B singer. However, what if I told you that your favorite rapper and or R&B singer has been lying to you? That all the things that make you connect to them, the message that they give, that love they lost that you can relate to, uh, being on the grind and hustling was all a facade. What if I told you that someone else is actually writing those words for them and they're just basically pantomiming? Basically, they're a puppet and being handled by a ventriloquist. And you can capitalize off that. You can become a millionaire from helping artists lie. Now, I understand I'm taking it to an extreme. However, truth be told, that's exactly what it is. Most of the time, your favorite artist isn't writing the songs or the lyrics that you've come to love. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. And the reason why you need to understand how this can work for you is going to be in this video. So in this particular episode, we're going to talk about how to take advantage of your favorite artists or all artists who utilize ghostwriters and why they use ghostwriters, how you can make money from it as a producer or songwriter and live a great life like we have as the peacemakers. This is the episode you don't want to miss. Stay tuned. Yo, if I got a team of ghostwriters, I can battle everybody. Like I, yo, I got, I got, right, I right. got. It's it, ten heads it's versus really one. Compared. Listen, I got, I got some really <laughs> sad news for all of you hip hop passionate fans out here in the game. Yo, boy, <laughs> most of your favorite rappers got ghostwriters. I've had the pleasure of sitting in on a lot of these ghostwriting hip hop sessions. Mm -hmm. And they don't have no qualms about an R&B nigga sitting in on these sessions. 90% of the population understands or at least believes that their favorite artist writes all their music. However, there's those of us who are in the industry that understand that is completely not true. And even if you see your favorite artist's name written or has written credits on that album somewhere, it doesn't necessarily mean that they wrote the song. That's what every artist thrives on in the industry. Songs already created and referenced is artists' wet dreams. I mean, literally. If they don't have to do nothing, that's their thing. All they want to do most of the time is find a great track with a great message, learn the words, uh, 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 hop in the studio, and record. See, artists like to buy complete songs because they know if they have a hit on their hands and another artist hears it, their chances of getting that music lessens greatly. And major artists, if nothing else, is very competitive. However, they, like everyone else, want a great album with great music. So if you're providing that to them, they're going to give you their money and be willing to give it to you quick as possible. So I know some of you guys will be asking, like, so why don't artists just write their own music they sing? Okay, most major artists, and this applies to every genre, are basically performers. Okay, Beyonce is a great example of that. Even though she does write music and 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 she's better basically performing pre-written music. Now, notice what I said, which is most artists, not all artists. Okay, most artists, not all artists. There are quite a few of them who are actually singer slash songwriters turned artist artist performers. But get to my point, which is. Even though most artists may have started out at one time possibly writing, a lot just don't for the sake of ensuring a strong album. This is how the, 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 the labels ensure that they're putting out a strong album because a lot of times 
like I told you before about those writer blocks and thinking outside the block and uh, box and things like that, artists get stuck into a certain style of music and it becomes repetitive. And I can tell you firsthand as I watch Jimmy sit down and, and basically chastise us to, to write certain things or change certain things or, or change the direction of music completely because in their mind, I, as they watch what's going on and what's trending, they're, in their mind as the label, they want to see certain music be put out and it uh, tend to cater to certain demographics. So major labels understand that thought process and they want to have a strong catalog that they can pull an artist off of or strong music that they can pull and go platinum with the artist. Now, a lot of times, let me tell you this, so because I really want you guys to comprehend this part. Quite a few times there are uh, artists who will want to change your lyrics. Get used to that. Okay? Some lyrics, artists want to change your lyrics um, because of one simple thing. They either want the music to go to in another direction or they're trying to get performance royalties as well. Now they're entitled performance royalties just like you are, but they want writer's credit. So sometimes you'll get an artist like Beyonce who don't write, she has people write for her, but she'll want to change lyrics in it, a line or two or a verse or something like that and want you to use certain words or verses or try to incorporate her ideal into it because what that does is it gives her now writer points and now she's able to capitalize off the writer's royalties. Now, let me say something to you. Who the hell cares if Beyonce wants me to change her lyrics? If Beyonce is gonna sing my song and it goes 10 times platinum or platinum, I don't care, guys, you gotta understand that part. I don't care. And one of the other things I want you to understand about why artists, and what's so important, let me give you the history of what used to happen. It used to be a day and time where A&Rs would solicit music from producers and then once they purchased that music, they would then go and find a, um, a, a singer slash songwriter, right? To write to the music. And then, you know, basically that was the scenario that was when I was coming into the industry, what we, we basically worked on or, or how we got into the industry. Nowadays for you guys, if you provide an entire song, okay? Artists are gonna give you their money because you are short stopping them having to go out, make arrangements, and everything you become basically a one-stop shop for them okay and that's what they prefer and it allows you also guys to negotiate higher advance fees and higher royalties that was some of the things that justice league was able to do as well with us which was basically get more money for their their track because now it had more value and they weren't they didn't have any problem if they sold a track for 30 40 50 thousand dollars giving us 20 30 dollars split in half of this because it was more than the fifteen thousand dollars that it was getting per per track just for a beat, you understand? So if you have a complete song ready, waiting for an artist, and you're gonna save them time and money by not having to go find a writer, they will give you their money, guys. I mean that, okay? So that's the advantage to that. Now, for you artists and producers who say, you know what, that's all fine and dandy, but I'm not focused on making somebody else rich. I want to focus on my career, not writing for other artists. All I'll say to you is this, while you wait for a label to pick you up possibly or get your business together, you finally make it at some point in time with your career, maybe in your own hands. There is nothing better than to have song credits attributed to other artists that not only boost your popularity, but gives you residual income to furnish your dreams and aspirations. There is nothing like it. We put out ample peacemaker projects that we never even really pushed, but just had fun doing it and getting the accolades because our money was coming in from other artists. There is nothing like being an influencer who controls the hearts and minds of the world by having other people recite your lyrics or banging out your music. There's nothing like it, guys. There's nothing like it, and I promise you. So while you might be thinking, I only want to focus on my career, I'm telling you now, the greatest joy in this world is to have other people reciting our lyrics or be a part of a project that goes platinum or gets a Grammy award or anything like that. And I really want you to think about that. And there's nothing like having an artist cut you a check or having Universal or Aftermath cut you a check for a project well done.